And now, when we have adjusted by calculation the standard pattern of the jacket to the client's measurements, I highly recommend you check the correspondence of the new pattern with the client's measurements. Just at the time of ordering, you have to take the client's measurements for an ordinary classic jacket. In other words, the measurements which are necessary for cutting the shoulder garments. If you are into sewing, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. I recommend you take the following measurements. Shoulder width front and shoulder width back bust height, shoulder tip to bust point, center length front, center length back, full length back, shoulder slope back, armhole circumference, upper arm circumference, elbow circumference, wrist circumference, etc. Let us see how the adjusted pattern of the jacket corresponds to the actual measurements of my client. Let us start checking from the pattern of the jacket four part. I mark on the pattern my client's measurement of shoulder tip to bust point, 21 centimeters, point A. The bust point height measurement of my client is 23 centimeters, but I measure on the pattern 24 centimeters, point B, adding one centimeter for freedom of fit. It is visibly that the position of the jacket shoulder, line A to B, is changed greatly and it should be somehow balanced. A jacket is not a tight-fitting garment, so I surely will not change the shoulder slope, but I will draw a new shoulder line parallel to the initial one. Firstly, I decide to lower the shoulder line by 4 centimeters to make it go through point B. But, after looking at the configuration of the pattern, I still decided to draw the new shoulder line 3 centimeters lower than the initial one through point A and parallel to the initial line. The next question to arise was how to transfer the collar of the jacket and then to join it with the lapel. I decided to do it very simply. To cut out the pattern of the jacket collar, to put it on the new place, and to join it with the lapel. So, we have drawn the new lines of the shoulder and the collar on the jacket forepart. Let us go to the jacket back pattern. I put the client's measurements on the pattern of the back. Nape to waist, 38 centimeters, point C, which is 1.5 centimeters less than it is on the pattern and the shoulder slope back, 43 centimeters, 
point D, which is also 1.5 centimeters less than it is on the pattern. I cut the top of the jacket back pattern along the line C to D. and shift the cutoff section by 1.5 centimeters down. Thus, I keep the initial configuration of the jacket back pattern, but I change its height. I check the height of the side after the changes which are made on the pattern. According to the client's measurement, the height of the side should be 18 centimeters. It coincides. Now we need to figure out the jacket sleeve cap configuration. It is clear that after the change is made, the length of the sleeve cap should be reduced. To determine the new length of the jacket sleeve cap, I have measured the length of the armhole on the changed patterns of the back and the front. I have obtained the value of 43 centimeters. The length of the sleeve cap on the initial pattern is 45 centimeters. If the length of the armhole on the client's jacket is 43 centimeters, then the new length of the sleeve cap should be approximately 0.7 centimeters longer than the armhole. This is necessary to gather the sleeve slightly before stitching it in the armhole so as to make a mushroom form of the sleeve, as it is required according to the style. I have reduced the sleeve height at about 1 cm, and the new armhole length is about 44 cm, which is exactly what we need. I will gather the sleeve at approximately 0.7 to 1 centimeter on the sleeve cap section between the points E and F. My client's sleeve length to elbow is 34 centimeters, but it is less on the initial pattern. I draw the new elbow line and transfer the dart to point G. The sleeve length of my client is 57 centimeters. The sleeve length of the initial pattern is slightly shorter. I will not increase the sleeve length on the initial pattern because our jacket is not a classic one and the sleeve may be shorter or may even be rolled up. The wrist circumference on the initial sleeve pattern is bigger than the required 18 centimeters for our client. If necessary, I will make the sleeve a little narrower or lower the dart during the fitting. We should also not forget to give a close fit to our jacket. The corset will be sewn into the jacket. Therefore, our jacket should also be made narrow. My client's waist circumference is 68 centimeters. Therefore, each half of the back and each half of the front has a one-fourth part of the circumference, or 17 centimeters. The pattern of the jacket back. 
I measure the value of 17 centimeters on the half of the back pattern along the waistline without taking into account the dart. There are still 5 centimeters of extra distance to the side edge of the back, which should be distributed between the side seam, the darts, and the middle seam. It is best to draw the side seam of the jacket following the side seam of the corset. I transfer the configuration of the side seam of the corset pattern on the side edge of the jacket back pattern. The pattern of my corset completely corresponds to the size of my client and it is ready for cutting. Therefore, I cut out the side piece of the corset pattern along the side seam line Put it on the jacket back pattern, match the notches along the waistlines and the lower edges. The armhole of the jacket is slightly higher than on the top of the corset. and the corset is slightly shorter than the jacket. This is exactly what I need. I draw the new line of the side seam of the jacket. Due to the new line of the side seam, I managed to narrow the back of the corset by 1.7 centimeters. It is not a very good idea to hide the remaining 3.3 centimeters in the dart because we will have to extend it greatly in that case. Therefore, I will narrow the middle seam of the jacket back. This is a usual practice when a slope is made on the back. I hide 1.5 centimeters along the waistline. Point L. Draw down a vertical line through this point and join it with the point of the shoulder blades. So, I have made the central dart on the jacket. I measure again the distance along the waistline of the back pattern between the points L and M. and I see that I have to remove 1.8 centimeters more. I can distribute the remaining 1.8 centimeters by 0.9 centimeters on each side of the dart, but I have decided to make the jacket a little wider in the waist area, so I increase the dart opening by 0.5 centimeters from each side and I draw new dart lines. Having narrowed the back of the jacket, be sure to check the stomach circumference of the jacket pattern along the line at the distance of 12 centimeters below the waistline. The stomach circumference measurement of my client is 90 centimeters. Consequently, the half of the back has a quarter of this value, or 22.5 centimeters. I measure the stomach circumference on the pattern of the half of the corset back and get 23.5 centimeters. So the jacket will fit well on the back of my client. Thus, I have made all the adjustments on the back part of the corset pattern. I move to narrowing the pattern of the corset forepart. I transfer the side seam of the corset to the side edge of the jacket forepart.
Now the side seams of the corset and the jacket are the same, and they will match well after joining the pieces. I put the necessary client's measurement from point M along the waistline, equal to 17 centimeters, section M to H, without considering the dart opening. At this stage, I could finish narrowing the forepart as I had obtained the client's measurement. But, in my opinion, the area of the overlap or the wrap over of the jacket which is below the line drawn through point H perpendicularly to the waistline, turned out to be quite wide. Therefore, I decided to add one centimeter to the waist circumference, point P, reducing the wrap over, but at the same time to increase the dart opening by 0.5 centimeters on each side. The line drawn through point P perpendicularly to the waistline is the front midst line. Along this very line, a button or a loop will be sewn at the level of the lapel, point J. But I have not yet decided what kind of jacket fastener I will use. By the way, it is necessary to check the distance from the waistline at the front and at the back of the jacket to the bottom edge. My client's distance is 16 centimeters. These distances on the pattern are equal to 16.5 centimeters, i.e. everything is perfect. And the last thing I have to do on the forepart of the jacket is to check the stomach circumference along the forepart which should be 22.5 centimeters at the distance of 12 centimeters below the waistline. Measuring this distance from the side edge to the midst four-part line, I got the value of 22 centimeters, which is slightly smaller than necessary. To increase the circumference along the waistline, I decided to raise the dart, namely to transfer its top to point K. Thus, I'm done making adjustments to the patterns of the front and the back pieces of the jacket. I have to cut out the pieces of the jacket. I advise you to label the patterns of the side pieces of the jacket to avoid any confusion when stitching. I will add seam allowances directly on the fabric.